It's Friday night. It's the preview show. It's the No Name Never podcast. Hello and welcome to the preview show brought to you by the Known and Never podcast. I'm your host Natalie Bromley but joining me this week is the main man himself, the headliner of the preview show, Mr Dave Statman Roberts. Dave, hello, how are you? Hello Natalie, I'm very well, how are you? Yeah, not bad thanks, not bad indeed. It's been a tricky week on the old football front. I think we had a bit of a disheartened analysis show recording on Tuesday night because we were all feeling a bit down in the dumps following that that result on Saturday. But you know what? There's always another week, Dave, which is why we're here, of course. It's why we're here. Um, a nice, easy game coming up. A nice, easy game, yeah. They, they just, there's no, yeah, there's nowhere to hide in the Premier League, is there, Dave? Uh, well, we've got, we've got a full show for our listeners today, haven't we? We have got all of the preview of our next fixture. We've got quiz questions to give answers to and set for next week. We've got our first Premier League, um, fantasy Premier League update to, to give out. We've got all sorts going on. So shall we delve straight in, Dave? Shall we get on with things? Never a dull moment, yes. Never let's, a dull let's moment. Move on. <laughs> let's do it. Well, first up first, and it of course is the answer to last week's quiz question. Now we have a couple to recap, which we set you at the beginning um, of the preview show last week. No, it was at the end of the previous show last week, which is, of course, the Brighton game. Now, as a reminder, there are two questions this season. We're giving you an easy question and a slightly harder question, or depending on how Dave feels, it might be much harder. So let's just recap what this week's quiz questions were. The easier section, in which year did Burnley and Brighton first meet in a top flight fixture at Turf Moor? And secondly, which is the harder one, Willie Irvin was Burnley's top goal scorer in 1964-1965 and then again in 65-66. But how many goals did he score in the 65-66 season, which, along with Jimmy Robson in 60-61, remains the record for the most goals scored by any Burnley player in a single season? Oh, Dave, take it away. Okay, well, the correct answers to those questions were, for the easier one of the two, uh, 2018 was the first Premier League match at Turf Moor between Burnley and Brighton. It was the 2017-2018 season, but it wasn't until after the new year we played them, So, uh, and we certainly haven't played them in the past in the top flight, um, so the uh, 2018 was the answer. Uh, there was actually two home Premier League meetings in that calendar year. We played them again the following season, and that was before uh, Christmas. So we played them twice in 2018. But that was the, the answer to that question. And for the second part, the harder question, um, a magnificent tally of 37 goals was scored by uh, Willie Irvin in 1965-66 season, uh, which equaled uh, the 37 that Jimmy Robson scored in 1960-61. Uh, so that was the answer to the second part of the question, which was the uh, slightly more difficult one, I think. And what about answers, Dave? Do we get anybody who got them right? Uh, well, I don't think we had too many correct answers. One or two uh, correct answers for the uh, for the 2018, for the uh, first one. And I think we only had one. I think we only had um, Adam. Adam Dennett uh, got in touch and he uh, knew, well, maybe guessed that 37 was the uh, correct tally for Willie Irving's goal. So, uh, yeah, I think this, the second one definitely was the harder question of the two. It was. And I mean, I think some of the, some of our listeners who, who sent in correct answers for 2018 were, who were they? I've got my list here. Andrew Blythe, did we have? Yeah, we had Andrew Blythe. We had uh, Jan. We had Adam, we had, who did we have on Twitter? I should have got these before we got on there. I'm going to have a quick look beforehand and give people some shout outs because people take the effort to come into us and tell us their answers. And what we can do is give them a nice little shout out on our podcast. Um, so obviously, well done to all of you who did get those answers right, uh, particularly Adam, who somehow miraculously guessed 37. And I think he sent it as an email as well saying, Oh, I think I've gone way too high here, but I'm going to guess at 37 and got it spot on. Um, 
But we're going to have another quiz question for you at the end of this episode. So stay tuned, listeners. Do not go anywhere. We will set you your homework for next week right at the end of the preview show. Premier League head to head. So Dave, we have a show. We have it. We don't have a show. We have a show to produce, but we also have a game to discuss. And that is, of course, Liverpool away, Saturday the 21st of August, 12.30 kickoff, live on BT Sport. Why don't you kick us off in our history section, Dave, by telling us the, all about the Premier League meetings between the two? Uh, yeah, for this season, we are providing the head-to-head record between the two clubs in Premier League games, either at home or away, depending on the venue. And obviously, because we're at Anfield, uh, we're looking at the away games uh, against Liverpool in the recent Premier League seasons. Um, we visited Anfield in each of our previous seven Premier League seasons, but it wasn't until earlier this year, uh, back in January, that the Clarets finally tasted victory there in the Premier League era. Uh, we'd suffered three consecutive defeats in 29-2010, in 2014-2015 and in 2016-2017. Uh, that was despite us taking the lead in the third of those three games. Uh, Burnley have since won one, lost one and drawn two of the last four matches played there. Uh, Liverpool's incredible unbeaten home record in the Premier League had stood at 68 games prior to Burnley's visit last January. Uh, the match remained goalless until the 83rd minute. Uh, Ashley Barnes was brought down by Allison, and referee Mike Dean didn't hesitate to point to the penalty spot. Ashley Barnes took the penalty himself and fired the ball home, and the Clarets protected the lead for a nervy ending before the relief of the final whistle. Uh, sadly, as the match was played behind closed doors, there were no Burnley fans in the ground to celebrate the occasion, but many thousands of delirious Clarets fans celebrated at home in Burnley, the rest of the UK and around the rest of the world. Uh, we also came close to ending Liverpool's home run the previous season uh, in another match that was uh, took place behind closed doors. That was in July 2020. Uh, Jay Rodriguez equalised Andrew Robertson's goal. At the time, this was quite rightly lauded as a magnificent achievement as Liverpool won their other 18 home league games on the way to winning the title that season. Uh, Burnley goalkeeper Nick Pope is unbeaten in his three previous appearances for Burnley at Anfield. Uh, there's been two 1 1 draws and a 1 0 win. Uh, he was injured when Burnley lost 4 2. That was in March 2019, with Tom Heaton playing in that match. Uh, and compared with other away grounds like the Etihad, Burnley have at least had some solid results at Anfield in the Premier League era, with an overall record of played 7, 1 1, drawn 2, and lost 4. Good stuff. Memory match. Well, what about memory match then, Dave? What have you selected as a particular one to focus on for this? Uh, well, yeah, for this season, we're going to focus on one memory match for each episode, uh, which will be a past meeting between the two clubs at the same venue as the forthcoming match. Um, we're not exactly spoilt for choice in terms of away wins at Anfield, uh, with most of the rare memorable wins having already been covered in the, pre in the preview show in previous seasons, obviously other than the most recent one from last season. Uh, but we've taken the decision to highlight a drawn game, um, and that's the first time that Burnley managed to gain an away Premier League point against Liverpool. Um, after three consecutive Premier League defeats, as we've already mentioned, in our first three Premier League campaigns, we finally earned a point in a 1-1 draw in September 2017. Uh, the managers were, as they will be on uh, Saturday, Jurgen Klopp and Sean Dyche, and the Burnley captain was Ben Mee, uh, attendance of just over 53,000 at Anfield. Uh, Scott Arfield gave Burnley a first-half lead. Uh, he beat Simon Mignolet with a low shot at the Anfield road end in front of the delighted travelling Clarets fans. Uh, but the lead only lasted three minutes. Mo Salah uh, levelled the scores after finishing off a quick breakaway move. Uh, however, Burnley, helped by the inspirational Nick Pope in goal, were able to keep out the hosts and earn a valuable point on the road. Uh, as we now know, that season ended with a seventh place finish and entry into the qualifying rounds of the Europa League, which was Burnley's first taste of European football for over 50 years. Good stuff, Dave. On this day! Um, what about... On this day, what happened on this fixture day in previous years? I like this section. This is one of the new ones, and I do like this. It's a good idea. 
Yeah, well, we're looking back on matches played on the same uh, date in years past. Burnley have played 17 previous matches on the 21st of August. That's going all the way back to 1948. Uh, the first of those games was a 1-0 home win over Manchester City. That was on the opening day of the 1948-49 season. Uh, Jack Billingham scored the only goal. Uh, there was also one pass match against Liverpool on the 21st of August. That was actually at Turf Moor and was the second league game of the 1951-52 season. Um, it ended as a nil-nil draw. Maybe we'd settle for that and another point on, uh, on Saturday. <laughs> we definitely um, would. The other victories on the 21st of August were in 1950, uh, a 2-1 away win at Blackpool. In 1954, a 1-0 home win over Cardiff City on the opening day of that season. And we also beat Luton Town 2-1 at Turf Moor in 1971 in a second division game. Uh, the other two victories were slightly more recent. Uh, there was a 1-0 win at Oldham in 1999. Andy Payton scored the only goal towards the start of the season that will then with the promotion at the end of it. And also in 2010, we were convincing 3-0 winners at home to Leicester City with goals from Ross Wallace, Chris Owellamo and a Graham Alexander penalty. At the most recent time Burnley have played on August uh, 21st um, is back in a league match which took place nine years ago. That was in 2012 and was a 3-2 defeat at Middlesbrough. Despite goals from Charlie Austin and Junior Stanislas, the Clarets failed to come away from the Riverside with any points. Uh, so our overall record on the 21st of August is played 17, won 6, drawn 6 and lost 5. Yeah, good stuff. I remember that Riverside match. Club Connection! Next up then, Dave, is the Club Connection. Another one that I do very much like. Club Connection. What's, 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 who's featured for both teams? Right, well, yeah, one of the other new features this season uh, for the preview show is Club Connection. Uh, we're taking a look at the players and occasionally managers who've spent time at both clubs, with a particular focus on one individual. Uh, there haven't been too many players who've represented both Burnley and Liverpool since the Second World War. We've picked out four of them. Uh, we posted a quick poll on Twitter last weekend to try and get a, a snapshot, really, of who our followers wanted us to focus on. Uh, the four options were uh, Les Shannon, Brian Hall, Danny Ings and Peter Crouch. And the winner of our poll was da, 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 da. Danny Ings. Ah, of course it was. Perhaps not a surprise. Um, he was out in front with almost 70% of the vote. And so he will be the player that we'll be showcasing this week. So here's all about Danny Ings. Uh, Danny Ings was a player who Burnley manager Eddie Howe knew well from his time at Bournemouth. And in August 2011, he persuaded the Burnley board to find a fee believed to be around £1 million to tempt the 19-year-old away from the South Coast. After making his Burnley debut in February 2012, he played a total of 15 times that season and showed some further glimpses of his potential during the 2012-2013 season, but a couple of injuries curtailed his involvement. However, at the start of the 2013-14 season, which was Sean Dyche's first full season in charge, Charlie Austin was sold to QPR right at the start of the season. Uh, Danny Ing stepped up to play alongside Sam Vokes. Uh, the Vings partnership was sensational in the championship. Uh, between them, they fired in an incredible 47 goals in the league alone, uh, which eventually led to a second-place finish behind Leicester City and promotion to the Premier League. Uh, despite being Burnley's top scorer in the 2014-15 Premier League season with 11, it wasn't enough to save us from relegation. And after Danny Ings had let his contract run down, he made a move to Liverpool for a fee which had to be set by tribunal and was an initial £6.5 million plus add-ons. Uh, despite an injury-ridden three seasons at Anfield, he made another big money move to Southampton after a season-long loan, with Burnley also receiving a percentage of his substantial fee. Um, he recently made another big money move to Aston Villa and scored in his debut for them last weekend. Danny Ings scored 43 goals in 130 games for Burnley, and in just 25 appearances for Liverpool, he scored four times, although this did include a goal in a Merseyside derby. Uh, but although highly thought of in the red half of Merseyside, he was unable to realise his potential there due to an unfortunate sequence of injuries. Yeah, I miss the Vings partnership. 
It's a shame, really. I really wanted Danny to succeed at, at Liverpool. It's a real shame that it never worked out for him. But you know what? It, it, you know, he's had a great career since. Scouting report. Um, well, that's the history section um, wrapped up. Dave, why don't we move on to the present day, please? What what nuggets can you give us for this? Uh, well, yeah, we're, we're starting with the, the present, bringing us right up to date and looking at a scouting report. So we're trying to go into a little bit more depth this season, looking at our opponents. Uh, so starting off, uh, German-born Jurgen Klopp took over from Brendan Rodgers as Liverpool manager in October 2015 and he's already guided the Reds to the Champions League title in 2018-19 before ensuring that Liverpool became the champions of England for the first time in 30 years for the 2019-20 season. That was despite the fact the season had to be paused for three months due to the pandemic. Uh, Liverpool favour a 4-3-3 system, and this has served them well under Klopp. Uh, the key players in the system have been their talisman, the Egyptian Mo Salah, who's just begun his fifth season on Merseyside. He's had ample support in recent times, from the likes of Sadio Mane and Roberto Firmino up front. Uh, Despite being categorised as defenders, the team has also been reliant on the attacking prowess of their two full-backs, who've predominantly been Trent Alexander-Arnold and Andy Robertson, although the latter has been ruled out this weekend. Unlike some of their big spending rivals, Liverpool haven't splashed anywhere near as much cash in this summer's transfer window. Their only signing of note so far has been 22-year-old French central defender Ibrahima Konate, who arrived from RB Leipzig for a fee believed to be around £36 million. However, getting Virgil van Dijk back again after injury might seem like a new signing, as they missed his presence at the back for most of last season. Uh, We'll be bringing you the first proper update for this season's Fantasy Premier League very soon. But in terms of last season's points, Liverpool's most influential FPL contributors were, not surprisingly perhaps, Mo Salah way out in front, 231 points. Uh, Sadio Mane picked up 176. Uh, Andy Robertson, 161. And Trent Alexander-Arnold, 160. And Roberto Firmino, Firmino had 141. Uh, goalkeeper Alison Becker had 140. So they were their most influential players last season. Uh, as we've mentioned already, Andy Robertson suffered an ankle injury in pre season. He's been ruled out again for this game. Uh, Curtis Jones has been out injured, but may well be back for the weekend. And that probably also applies to Jordan Henderson and Tiago Alcantara. Uh, thanks, by the way, to Premier Injuries who are the best source for keeping close tabs on the injury situation at all the Premier League clubs. Yeah, good stuff. They do a really good job of that. Um, Well, that's all we can tell you about Liverpool from our perspective, but we do always try our best to get you uh, an inside opinion from our opposition this weekend. And this week, we are delighted to bring you this little preview from Henry Jackson. Opposition View. It's been a low-key summer at Anfield, really, with Ibrahima Kanate, the only real addition, coming in from RB Leipzig. He's a huge, exciting young centre-back, so we certainly want to keep an eye out on. Genie one Aldum's obviously gone to PSG, which is a huge loss after five years of brilliant service. He and the club couldn't quite agree on a new deal, which was a shame, but I understand his frustrations and I hope he does well in, in Paris. Um, I think there's frustration from the fan base that there haven't been more signings. I'd certainly like to see a, maybe another central midfielder come in to provide competition and possibly a young forward who could be a long-term replacement for the likes of Salah and Mane. But I don't think there's any cause for concern. I still think the squad is, is huge that Klopp's got at his disposal now that key men are back. So football fans always love new signings, but I don't think um, it's a huge issue, the fact that it's all been very quiet compared to their rivals. Looking at the title race, I think Liverpool are certainly right in the mix, even though quite a few rival fans have written them off because of the lack of business. But I think when you look at last season, the incredible amount of injuries they had, I think that's now a perception in people's minds that the squad isn't big enough, when in fact those individuals are now back in form and fresh and Liverpool look raring to go. Not only that, a lot of players lost form, such such as Alisson, Trent Alexander-Arnold, Roberto Firmino. People like that have all come back and look very good in pre-season and the game at Norwich. So I'm hugely confident that there'll be a strong title challenge. Man City are still the favourites for me, but they're 
they're not invincible, as they showed last weekend. Chelsea look very strong and Lukaku will only make them better. And Man United are a dangerous team who will certainly be in the top four and will hang around for a while. But I think ultimately their manager is the main thing holding them back. I think Liverpool will finish second overall in the end. City will win it. But I think it will be a much closer title race than the one we saw last season. In terms of Saturday's team selection, I don't think it will be hugely different to the Norwich game last week. Alisson will certainly be in goal. and I think the back four of Alexander-Arnold, Matip, Van Dijk and Simakas is to be expected. Robertson is close to returning from injury, but I don't think he'll be risked ahead of next weekend's game against Chelsea. So Simakas will continue there. In midfield, I think Fabinho will come back in, probably in place of Alex Oxlade-Chamberlain, who was disappointing against Norwich. And then it's a case of whether or not Naby Keita and James Milner keep their places, or whether Thiago and Jordan Henderson come back in. I think Fabinho, Thiago, Henderson is the strongest midfield moving forward, but I would personally guess that Klopp will keep them on the bench, will certainly keep Thiago and Henderson on the bench for now, and maybe go with Fabinho, Milner and Cater. I would like to see Thiago given a game just because of the creativity that he provides, certainly against a team who will come and certainly put 10 men behind the ball like Burnley. I don't think it will be easy on Saturday. I don't think games against Burnley often are, even though we, we had quite a comfortable win against you at Turf Moor towards the end of the season. But your win at Anfield showed how dangerous you can be and Dyche has quite a good record against Klopp and they quite often come to blows on the touchline. So I think it will be one of those occasions where Burnley will frustrate us for large periods um, and I think it might may require substitutes to be game changers. But ultimately, I think Liverpool's quality will shine through and especially the fact that fans are back in Anfield and that stadium's going to be full. It should be a special occasion, and I think that quality will give them too much for Burnley. So I'll go for maybe a 2-0 two, two win to Liverpool, but Burnley will want to respond after their defeat last weekend, so it'll be interesting to see how it goes. OK, before we have a look about what we think that our um, take is going to be on the game, Dave, who's our referee for the weekend? Right, well, the man who refereed this fixture last season has been appointed to take charge again this Saturday. Uh, that's the veteran 53-year-old Tranmere Rovers celebrity fan, Mike Dean, from Heswell on the Wirral. Um, there was a time when football referees were forced to retire in their mid-40s. And although he's no longer eligible for international football, it's a remarkable achievement that Mike Dean continues to referee at the top level of English football. He has his detractors, including several Liverpool players and members of their coaching staff after the final whistle last season. But to my mind, he's still one of the better referees in this country. Uh, stretching all the way back to 1997, uh, this will be his 49th Burnley match, meaning that we may well be able to mark the milestone of match number 50 sometime later this season, probably more likely than not. Um, his previous 48 games have seen 16 wins for Burnley, 19 draws and 13 defeats. For Premier League games only, Burnley have won 9, drawn 9 and lost 8 out of 26. At the video assistant referee, who will be benefiting from some thicker lines and some newfound discovery of common sense, we hope, is Stuart Atwell. <laughs> yeah, fingers crossed. I am hoping that we're going to have some successful VAR uh, decisions this this week. Now, I know you're not going to leave it there, Dave. You like to treat our listeners. So why don't you delve deep into those pockets of yours and give our listeners your miscellaneous stat of the week. Okay, well, this week's stat is uh, Burnley equaled a 27-year-old Premier League record last weekend uh, since Robbie Brady was sent off at Huddersfield in January 2019, ironically by Mike Dean. Uh, Burnley have played a further 94 matches home and away in the Premier League without a player being dismissed. Uh, that equaled a record which Ipswich Town set between the start of the Premier League in 1992 and 1994. If Burnley can avoid a dismissal at Anfield, then that record will be broken this weekend. Uh, while we hope that Burnley can keep 11 men on the pitch for the full 90 minutes or more at Anfield to give us the best possible chance of victory, we'd much prefer a win and three points. But who's to say we can't have both? Oh, indeed. I like that. Um, so how are you feeling about this this game? I mean, in some respects, it's not the, the fixture that we wanted directly after that opening um, game against Brighton. But then equally, there's kind of no pressure on us at the weekend, Dave. Yeah, maybe it's one of those situations when it is a, a little bit of a, a free hit. I think the uh, 
the expectations under normal circumstances wouldn't be that great for a, a trip to Anfield. Although, looking back at the history, we have seen that we've had some decent results there. Certainly when you compare it to, to when we go and play Manchester City, we kind of uh, expect a, a, a 4 or 5 nil beating every time we go there, whereas we have at least had some results at Anfield, including that fantastic victory last season. Mm. Um, I think it's going to be a different prospect this season, having a, a full crowd. It's their first um, home game back in the Premier League with uh, with crowds, uh, with a full crowd anyway. Um, and that will certainly G them up. I mean, Am- Anfield can on occasions be uh, uh, a big boost for the uh, for the home side. So Burnley have certainly got to play the 11 men of Liverpool who are more than capable of winning anyway. Um, and also that crowd behind them as well. So I think it's going to be uh, a tough game, let's say, on Saturday. We know it's going to be a tough game, but it's yeah one, one of those games where... Perhaps the pressure's off a little bit in that the expectations aren't too high. So whatever happens, um, you know, we just want to go out there and uh, and do our best. And we know we can get uh, we can get results. And we've got a lucky mascot, Nick Pope, who's never lost there before. True, very true. Um, prediction then, Dave. <laughs> Uh, I still think we'll lose. Oh, for God's sake! <laughs> I'm gonna. I'm gonna. I'm being honest. I'm being honest. Be optimistic. I'm going to back our boys, and I'm going to say a one-nil win with a Ben Mee header, and I'm going to carry on saying that until Ben Mee scores it. Uh, well, do let us know what you think your predictions will be, listeners. You can tweet us at None and Ever, or you can email us at previewshow at noneandever.net. Please, we want the scorer, we want the scorer, and we want to know how he's going to score header. Left foot, right foot. Penalty. Penalty. Whatever, whatever. Tell us how you think it's going to go. Fantasy Premier League update. Uh, moving on then, Dave, to the second half of the previous show. And it is, of course, a look at our Fantasy Premier League. Now, we finally have something to report. Obviously, last week we just looked at the opening of Bear and gave listeners instructions of how to join it. But we've had a full set of fixtures for game week one. So we're about to find out who's leading in this very early stage and just how many entrants we've had. Um, I believe we've had even more um, this season with well over 300 trying to outwit their fellow Clarets fans and become our overall champion and knock poor Sean Danaher off his pedestal and, of course, win that very coveted known and ever sticker. Plus surprise. Um, Dave, what happened in game week one? Right, well, with 38 game weeks, the Fantasy Premier League is definitely a marathon and not a sprint, uh, which is precisely what you'd expect to hear from someone like me whose team is sitting in (laughs) mid-table after game week one. Um, As Natalie's already mentioned, uh, we've managed to persuade many more of you to join in with this season's FPL. Uh, There's been a significant increase of 80 from the 240 we had last season uh, to 320 already for this season. Uh, And we do have uh, an early update in terms of our top five, if you'd like to hear them. I certainly would. Go ahead. Right, well, our top five, we've got uh, last season's runner-up uh, and fellow podcaster Adam Dennett has managed to get himself into fifth place after the first week. Uh, he's on 112 points. Uh, we've got Jack Toner, just one point ahead, 113. Uh, he's in fourth place. We've got uh, Deck Clark in joint second. We've got joint second uh, managers because we've also got Michael Westbrook, uh, and Deck Clark, they're both on 115 points. And our leader, very uh, early leader at this very early stage, is uh, Josh Bond, who's got 118 points from the first week. So congratulations, Josh. Long way to go, but you're our uh, leader at the very start. Good. And how long are we keeping the league open for this, this year, Dave? Uh, well, I've decided we've got a little break. We've obviously got the the match this weekend, and then we've got Leeds. Is I think mean, it's the uh, is it on the Monday or Sunday? It's, it's yeah. It, it, that 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 game is is the last game before the international break. So we're going to have the break there. We're going to give people till the end of August, which I think is the day after the Leeds game. Then we're going to close it off. So if you if you still want to enter, you still can. Um, more the merrier. Join up and uh, yeah. We, you know, we, we'd like you to join us and uh, and stay up to date with this as the season goes on. Yeah, that's a good idea. Is that I think uh, you know, and plus as well, the transfer window will have closed by then as well, so it gives people a chance to get their teams in. Good idea. How do they join, Dave? Please. 
Uh, we've got a league code. It's uh, I'll read that out. It's seven I X A E seven. That's seven India X Ray Alpha Echo seven. So if you've already gone onto the um, FPL website, so if you go to Premier League uh, dot com and you click on uh, Fantasy Premier League, you go there, select your team, and then once you've done that, you can join the. Well, you can join as many leagues as you want. Uh, I think there might be a limit on it, but join up with your leagues. And you just need that code. It's 7IXAE7. And we'll put that out with the uh, socials when we post this uh, uh, pre- preview show link so people can uh, can see that and join up and, uh, and get involved. Definitely. Um, team none and ever, how are we doing in this first game week? Uh, well, we've got Adam Dennett in our league this season. So he's top. Uh, he's uh, way out oh, in front. We've God, got, hang on uh, a minute. I didn't think that through when I invited him onto the panel, did I? <laughs> That was an Should error. have been banned from the FPL, yeah. Uh, we've error. got Matt, uh, producer Matt's in second place with 91 points. Um, I'm, well, so I'm, I'm, I'm right in the middle, so I looked at it, and it actually gives you the average number of points that all the teams got, and the average was 69, and I got 70, so I'm, I'm clinging on to the hope that I just, just beat the average. I got 70 points. Uh, George is in fourth with 66, and you, Natalie, are in fifth on 64 points. I'm last already. Are you kidding me? True to form. Oh, come on. I tried really hard this week as well. I hate this stupid game. It's um, a marathon, not a sprint. I don't, yeah, I'm sure. Um, what about team of the week then? Let's move on. Right, yes. If you'd have picked all these 11 players in a 4-4-2 formation, you would have got a stonking 152 points. Uh, the, so the players you should have picked with hindsight were uh, Larice in goal, and then we had a back four of Alonso, Shalabar, Pereira and Pinnock. Uh, midfield was uh, Fernandez, Salah, Pogba and Ben Rama. And up front, uh, Antonio and Dennis. So if you had those 11, that would have got you 152. I think uh, you'd have done, done well to pick all of those. I think there's some high-value players. And obviously, extra points as well if you'd have picked, uh, yeah. picked one as your captain. Uh, Bruno Fernandes was the highest point scorer overall with 20. So if you captained him, uh, that would have been double the 20. And if you triple captained him, which you've got your chip to use, you maybe don't want to use it uh, on this week. And use it for uh, uh, maybe a double game week later in the season. That's part of the tactics as well. Then uh, that will add to your t- uh, points total as well. Or do what I did and actually remember to use your tokens at all this year. Because I think I went through to the end of last season and there was some still in the bank. And I'm just, I don't know how you use them magic token things. Um, well, that's that's great. I, I, I'm loving this. I love our, even though I'm really rubbish at it, I do love our league and I love seeing how everybody's getting on. So, we're, of course, going to let you have another FPL update in our next preview show, in which we'll also be looking ahead to our next Premier League match against Leeds United at Turf Moor, which I believe is... Actually, I'm just checking. I think it's Bank Holiday Sunday. It's a Sunday. It is, yes. it is a Sunday, because I'm going on... Two o'clock. Me. I'm going to go on my holidays after the game on the Monday, so all good. Um, excellent. So, yeah, if you are listening to this and you're not yet in our league, please do join us. It's a lot of fun, and you never know, you might get a shout-out as one of our... Um, leading players. We should do something actually, Dave, because I'm just very conscious that we talk about our top five, and quite rightly so as well, because they're the ones who are doing really, really well, but we need some kind of incentive for the team, the, the managers who are mid-table, who are doing very, very well, but haven't quite got in the top five. I'm going to give that some thought, see what we can do for them. Statman Dave's quiz question. Let's close out then the preview show with our quiz question. Do, 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 do. Sticking with a two part format, Dave, what have you decided to set our listeners this week? Uh, yes, well, this week's quiz questions are, again, two parts easier and harder. The easier part, I think. Um, Burnley won at Anfield for the first time in a Premier League match last season, thanks to Ashley Barnes's penalty. But which player was denied a winning goal in the previous season's meeting there when his shot in the final minutes struck the crossbar? Ooh. And what's the harder question? Okay, for the harder question, other than the four players we included in our Club Connection poll earlier, that was Les Shannon, Brian Hall, Danny Ings and Peter Crouch, how many other players can you name 
who have played competitive matches for Liverpool and Burnley since World War II. That is very hard. How do our listeners submit their answers, please? Uh, you can get in touch with us to let us know your answers using any of these methods. You can tweet us or preferably send us a direct message on Twitter. That's at no Nay Never. Uh, you can email us. That's preview show at no Nay Never dot net. Uh, or you can also reply to the post for this preview show on either the No Nay Never Facebook page or on YouTube. And we'll reveal the correct answers at the start of the next preview show. Good stuff. Um, right. Any other business, Dave? I think um, I've only the only thing that I've got to to talk to our listeners about is to remind um, our listeners about the the newsletter team. Um, previous host Jamie Smith and ex producer Adam Howarth, who have launched our weekly newsletter. Um, you can drop a fantastic newsletter. Jamie's done a really good job so far of articles, and we also put the quiz questions in there and FPL updates and all sorts of fun things. Um, straight to your inbox every Monday. You can subscribe to that, please, by heading to nonanever.substack.com and hitting that subscribe button. Um, it's absolutely free. It doesn't cost you anything, and you can get um, a second, a third dose from your Nonanever team in a week. Two podcasts, one newsletter. We spoil you um so that's the only thing that i had on my any other business dave do you have anything to to add before we wrap it up uh i don't think there's anything at the moment up we've mentioned the fixes already we know we're playing uh leeds and then we've got an international break coming up and i think we've got something lined up for the international break but we'll uh maybe let you know more about that when we do uh the uh next preview show do we mm-hmm. have i missed an email ah Oh, excellent. Listeners, apparently we have something lined up for the international break, which I probably should have read, and I will therefore go and read my emails after this recording because I feel like I'm, producer Matt's now going to send me a clip around the ear all for missing something. Um, I think you wanted to mention as well about the food bank collection starting again, Dave? Uh, yeah, well, they, they were out uh, in force before the um, uh, opening game of the season against Brighton and would be back there again for the match uh, against Leeds. So, I mean, we'll give another reminder as well before the uh, Leeds game. It's just a case of obviously having the uh, the bins around Turf more for people to come and uh, drop their tins and things off uh, before the game. They'll be very appreciative of any donations that people uh, have to bring along. Definitely, yeah. It's a really good clause. And, of course, um, Sean Donoghue helps with that, who listeners will remember from last season as our uh, FPL winner. So please do support that cause when you can. And I think I need to, I need to catch up with Sean, actually, because I think last season we'd arrange for the known and ever team to man the bins one match day and collect them. So we will get back in touch with Sean about that. And uh, you can come down to Turf and drop us a tin of beans and say hello to your podcast teams and the newsletter teams if we can get Jamie in. And Adam involved too. Um, well, I'm going to wrap it up there because I think that's all we've got time for this week's preview show. It has been a pleasure as always. I do love the preview show. It makes me smile. Um, and my thanks, of course, go to everybody who's been involved in producing this show and getting it out there. To Henry Jackson for his opposition view. To Turf Moor Stadium announcer Dominic Walker for his specially recorded preview show announcements. To producer Matt for knitting all of this together and getting it out there. Um, to Dave Roberts, of course. Dave puts a phenomenal amount of, of time and effort into this podcast. Um, and it's just his baby and it's, it's really, really good. We, we, I always say we would not be here without you. We really wouldn't be here without you, without uh, Dave Roberts. So thank you, Dave, as ever. Um, but last and, of course, by no means least to you, the listener, for taking time to download and listen to this podcast. Your support is very much appreciated. Um, we will be back on Tuesday with the analysis show. We'll be looking at what happened away at Anfield at the weekend. And Dave and I will be back next Friday to look ahead to that Leeds game at home. If you've got any comments, questions, or anything in the meantime, you know how to get in touch with us. A quick reminder, you can tweet us at None and Never. You can make a comment on our Facebook page. Or you can email us at previewshow at noneandnever.net. I've been Natalie Bromley. This has been the preview show brought to you by the None and Never podcast. Until next time.